Hi, good afternoon and welcome. We are here in studio again talking sports with Val. There is a lot of stuff going on. We've got most of our fall sports underway. Tonight is opening night for football. Um, but Val, I want to start off with some golf. The Rochester Lady Zebras golf team set a new school record for nine holes last night. and They didn't break it by one or two strokes. They broke the record by seven strokes. What an amazing performance, including an albatross. That was just an amazing night for the Rochester Zebras golf team. Right. They beat Winnemac 153 to 197. <laughs> the previous school record for Rochester was 160 set back in 2012. And I was around for that team with um, Car the two Lingenfel Karsten Lingenfelter and Covenant Lingenfelter. And that team had Caitlin Faust on it. And that team had... Um, uh, I believe it had Lauren Doherty on it. She's Lauren Adley now. But, I mean, that team wound up going to the state finals. So that team was a very talented, special team. And for this team to break it by seven, that, that's just remarkable. And, yeah, um, Ava Thomas shot a 34 last night, which I believe is her personal best for nine holes. And it included a double eagle and albatross. On mm -hmm. uh, number 12, which was, you know, again, that's a two on a par five. You don't. That's even rarer than a hole in one. Mm-hmm. And for her to do that, that is just outstanding. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, because, I mean, that's, I mean, you know, you got, the, the, they played on the back nine last night at Ron Barn Golf Club at Mill Creek. Number 12 is the one, the par, the back to back par fives on 11 and 12. 12 is the one that's, it's the more reachable par five where you can maybe be a little bit more aggressive, but for Ava to get a, a double eagle, wow. And that is amazing. And oh, by the way, Olivia Bailey shot a 35, and she had back to back birdies on the two par fives. Yeah, 11 and 12, she breed both. You know, the impressive thing to me is, you know, we knew what we were getting with Thomas Bailey and more, right? Mm -hmm. But Hawes, uh, boy, she, coming in as a freshman, she shot a 44. 44. I mean, she yeah. has she has become a, you know, a rock in that number four spot for this team as well. She parred both of the par fives, and she had a birdie on number 15, which... Uh, Bailey, Thomas, and more, none of them got a birdie on 15, but Hawes did. Yeah. So for her to shoot a, a 44, that's something. Because remember, she shot a 58 just last week. So she is getting better quickly. And, yeah, I mean, uh, I just feel bad for Bianca Huizar of Winnemac. She shot a 35. <laughs> broke the Winnemac school record for nine holes. Yeah. That's after she's already broken the Winnemac school record for 18 holes twice already. Yeah, breaks the record and doesn't even get medalist. <laughs> and doesn't even get medalist. And her team lost by 44 strokes. But. Yeah. Yeah, I think Winnemac's a pretty good team. They just mm. ran into a red hot team that uh, you know I think was really enjoyed playing in the back nine. Yeah, if you haven't got a chance to go out and watch these girls, uh, it's it's fun. Um, I'm I'm thinking maybe we need to give Joe the GoPro, and since he's out there anyway, maybe we can get some footage of this because uh, this yeah. is this is setting itself up to be a, a pretty historic season for the Rochester golf team. Right, and they've also added uh, Ella McCarter and Lainey McGonis on the team in recent days. So they've gone from four players to six. So there's a little bit of a buffer if somebody doesn't have a great day. I know mm -hmm. Ella's shot at a 65, and she shot in the 60s her first uh, two rounds, 65, in fact, both rounds. Yeah. So I think everybody's really happy to have Ella there. That's uh, she's really been welcome on the team, and that, and so you know, it looks. Uh, and there's a little, a little bit more of an insurance policy, but I think at the same time, I think they've also told Ella, hey, just go out there and have fun because, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we'll, we'll do the heavy lifting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This kind of reminds me of that Valley team, you know, that we talked about, that all the, the girls that graduated last year. But, I mean, they had played together for so long, and, and this team just really likes each other. I mean, they, they like each other. They're friends. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the chemistry of this team is great. Oh, oh I, absolutely. Yeah. I think. If you just hang around them, I mean, that's that's pretty obvious. If you hang around them for about thirty seconds, you can figure that out. Yeah. So that's that's some. <laughs> I was gonna say some good stuff. That's some great stuff. Yeah. They're, uh, you know, doing. I mean, you know, you you can break a record, but they shattered the record. Right. They you know they shot three sixty six at the uh, Western Invite last week and finished fifth out of fifteen teams. Certainly a good round, but I don't know if that force foreshadowed a 153 for nine holes. I think that was just a wow moment. Yeah. What's the 18-hole record? 
for the school? Do you know? Uh, putting you on the spot. Yeah, you're putting me on the spot. I'd have to check with Chad Thomas. I would imagine it's something in like the 330s or 340s. Yeah. But that, uh, that, I'm, that, I'm that guessing record's... we might see that record go down. Yeah, too. that record's pretty vulnerable, I would have to think. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, it's, uh, it's exciting stuff for the uh, Lady Zebras golfers, and uh, we're going to keep our eye on them and right. keep letting you know what's going right. on. And they also won a nine hole match against Western earlier in the week, yeah. which was, I mean, they, that's Western has known for the terrific girls golf program mm -hmm. so for rochester to beat them that's that's another feather in their cap yeah yeah the uh successes just keep rolling in for yeah. the ladies ease right i mean and, and you know i mean they're they, they just they're good in all facets of the game i mean they're you know they hit the ball well they hit the ball far and accurately off the tee all of them have good iron games so even if they don't you know even if they don't get on the green in two they can usually hit good enough approach shots where they don't leave themselves uh too difficult of a putt and I mean, they, they just so they and they just they just have a good idea of course management as well, mm -hmm. and that that only speaks to their. I mean, they play a lot of golf at different courses over the over the season and the off season, but they've also got really knowledgeable coaches and Chad Thomas and Dan Bailey. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing too. I've I've heard you know several people have told me that if those two could coach my kid in, in every sport, I would take it. Cause mm -hmm. just the way they, uh, you know, their demeanor and the way they talk to them, it just, whatever they're doing, however they're doing, it seems to be, uh, seems to be working. And, and even the parents notice it. So yeah. some good stuff there. We, uh, we got our, uh, 2023 fall broadcasting season underway this week. We started off down at pioneer high school on Tuesday as the Rochester zebras were at pioneer for, uh, a volleyball matchup, non-conference, but both teams could meet again in the postseason as they're in the same sectional and actually Pioneer hosting that sectional. So a little bit of coverage here from uh, from that one down there. You want to talk through that a little bit here? Right. Well, uh, you know, this is a very young Rochester team with only one senior on it, and Pioneer has seven seniors. I think we talked about that going in. There would be a huge advantage in terms of uh, – Experience, and then on top of that, this would be a very motivated Pioneer team coming off a loss to Cast and then the Cast County tournament on Saturday, which I guess is a, well, I think we'll be talking about that a little bit more when we talk about Cast and volleyball coming up later in the show. But um, again, Rochester, they they you know they just seem to be chasing the ball all night, and again, that's going to happen, but. It was almost happening too much, especially in terms of passing. You know, the, their their pass they couldn't get their passes to the setter, and Aubrey Wil or, and uh, Aubrey Wilson was having to run all 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 around just to make a good set, and so they couldn't get their attacks from good positions on the court. And meanwhile, Pioneer was serving really well, and they were just, you know, when Pioneer volleyball is playing well, they're just almost breathing on top of the net. Mm -hmm. And we saw a lot of that. We also saw Pioneer really kind of stretch the width of the court very well in this match. I mean, Pioneer gets a lot of offense out of the middle. You, you always seem to know that coming in. But they also get, all, you know, they all, they're all, very good offense from the opposite. You know, Kirsten Nyes can hit the ball from essentially the right side of the court, but, you know, they can also, also have, you know, they also have Mackenzie Rogers hitting the ball from the left side of the court. And then, you know, you have players like Kylie Edinger down the middle. So it was, Pioneer has a lot of different um, hitters who can not, not only do they have a lot of different hitters, but they have a lot of different hitters who can hit the ball from all over the court. And so it just really um, added up to a pretty thorough victory. I, I did think that, you know, we saw some things. Right. Obviously, the first set was uh, a lot of nerves from Rochester, but you can see here in this second set, they're, they're battling back. They actually force a, uh, a pioneer timeout here, getting it to within three at 20 to yeah. 17. So. Right. The, 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 right. These last few points you've just seen, those were kind of the, the best stretch of play that Rochester had during this match but there to me it, it seems like there's you can tell there's pieces there mm -hmm. and the the big thing and we talked about this Tuesday the big thing that I was impressed with was how they reacted out of those timeouts they you could tell that they're they're listening to what coach Strasser is saying mm -hmm. and the other coaches are saying and they're able to act on that sometimes you know you get into the situation where you're you're talking and they're looking at you, but they're not hearing what you're saying. And it, it really seems like, you know, despite the loss, uh, there there were some things in that in that match that you can take out of there as uh, positives if you're Coach Strasser. 
Right. Now, there are two players who played against Plymouth in the season opener who did not play against Pioneer. That would be Sophia Kuskusakis and uh, Lily Lett. Sophia uh, was ill and couldn't play against Pioneer. And, you know, she's a freshman who's, I think, going to be a, a big hitter on this team and really has had has seemingly adjusted well to the speed of the game. And then Lily Lett suffered a right knee injury in the Plymouth match, and she's, I mean, she's really going to be missed because she's about as experienced as anybody on mm -hmm. the team, and she can play almost any position on the court. Uh, but Lily suffered a right knee injury against Plymouth, so uh, Braylon Hunter got some time. I think I thought Braylon Hunter looked pretty good out there, and then Logan Honkamp really uh, got a lot more playing time. So uh, with uh, Aubrey Wilson, Braylon Hunter, and Logan Honkamp, and Sophia Kuskusik, as we've now seen four seniors get... You know, pretty extensive varsity action already just through this, the first two matches of the year. Four freshmen. Four freshmen. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, to go with the juniors like uh, Audrey Bollinger and Riley Clevenger, uh, and, you know, hopefully they can get let back. And then... Uh, yeah, Mia Hauschel. Yeah, Mia yeah. Hauschel, mm -hmm. you know, is somebody who can, uh, you know, has, has seen some time as a setter. I think is one of the better servers on the team, mm -hmm. so... Uh, I think it's a pretty athletic team. It's not the tallest team, but I think it's a pretty athletic team. And they, uh, Coach Linnea Strasser has really emphasized defense so far. But I think it's just one of those things where they, they need just a little bit of success. And I think if, if they can get a little bit of success, more will follow. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's a pretty, you know, the Plymouth match, was that was the frustrating one where they lost 25-20, 27-25, 25-8. They were up 20 to 15 in the first set, and Plymouth scored the last 10. Mm -hmm. They were up 24 22 in the second set, and Plymouth wound up pulling that one out. Mm -hmm. And I think, and then in the third set, you just kind of saw the, their overall level of play drop. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of very characteristic of a young team. But the fact that they were in position to win each of those first two sets is a very good sign. Yeah. Early season schedule not really conducive to a, a young team that you're trying to you know find your way with because you know Plymouth Pioneer and then the Tomahawk that's a that's a pretty rough start to your season right but uh, you know we'll see what they do down at uh, North Miami coming up tomorrow right and that's the North Miami the Tomahawk Invitational in North Miami is a tournament they played every year for a long time um, you know it's four groups of three so it'll be twelve teams you play it's a round robin so you play everybody in your group both two matches within your group and then two kind of place matches after that. So, um, you know, the thing about the place matches is those are usually pretty close matches because you're... You're, place, yeah, you're playing the same place team out of the other yeah. group. Yeah. So, I, 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 you know, I'll be curious to see how they do. I, I, I think this, this tournament this year is going to be, you know, typically it's been Northwestern or, you know, something like South Adams in recent, year, recent years. I, I think it might be a little more wide open this year. So I'll be curious to see how they do. But uh, I, I think the... You know, I think playing better will help then develop leadership. Mm -hmm. I think the the Plymouth match was one of those where they, you know, as Coach Strasser said, they just couldn't finish. Mm -hmm. You know, they would get to that point, and then somebody's got to some. Sometimes they got to get their heads together and say, "Okay, I've got this." Especially when the opponent makes a little bit of a comeback. Yeah, and I think that's the next step. Yeah. But, you know, they only have one senior in Keaton Doran, and Keaton, I think, has made some nice contributions as well. But, again, sometimes when you get in that huddle, after, after a point, somebody just has to to step up. And I think who's going to be that girl that steps up? Yeah. We'll, we'll and, determine whether they have some success. But this team's going to win some matches. And that, that might even be somebody out of that freshman class. Might be. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that was just the start of our broadcast week. We were pretty busy last night. We were down at Caston doing the uh, Rochester Caston uh, soccer match, and then we also had the uh, Caston and Culver volleyball match going on as well last night on live stream. So um, a lot of stuff going on last night. A couple of really good uh, matches. Uh, the soccer game was, was quality between Caston and Rochester, and then we're going to talk about that volleyball matchup here in a minute, too. That was really good. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look here. The value and I did the uh, the soccer game. And uh, let's take a look here. Is It was uh, Kasten who uh, who struck first in this one, but uh, Rochester would uh, kind of answer and strike often after that. 
And you see Alex Craig pop a shot over the head of Parker Wallace in the net for the first goal of the game, and Caston led one zip. Um, and that was with it. That was pretty. That was what within the first what ten minutes of the game. But then Rochester would tie it on that goal by Wyatt Davis, and that made it one one. And then this would be the goal that would put them ahead. Carlos Placencia would score on a direct kick. This was a bullet of a shot. That yeah, was a beauty. I Lane mean... Halterman, the cast and goalkeeper, just did not have a chance at that one. Mm -hmm. That was a beauty. Like you said, and you know, uh, and then this was, uh, you know, Wyatt Day was kind of hustling, retrieving a loose ball and finding Braden Crom who scores. That made it 3-1. to one. Wyatt, was, Wyatt Davis was very impressive last night. Yeah. That was Placencia's second goal of the game. They made it 4-1 to one, and then Rebour Tindy. Well, that was a great shot, too, because I think, you know, they had been kind of going to Halterman's left, and there, uh, a great shot by Tindy going to the going to his right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I was talking to the Rochester kids after the game, and one thing you notice right away is how much fun they were having, and, and even the kids kind of noticed. I mean, last year was, it was just a tough season, and you can tell the kids now, they, they're just having fun with each other. Mm -hmm. And I know we, we almost take that for granted, like, Aren't they always having fun? Well, no, not always. Right. And last year was such a tough year, but, I mean, the, you know, they were pouring ice buckets on each other and just having a, a, a good time. And, you know, so I, and that's something that Coach uh, Eric Back has talked about, too. He goes, he goes, I'm not sure the, the kids were in love with the coaches early on because they did a lot of running. Mm -hmm. But he thought that was a big problem early, last year. They just would run out of gas, so they really try to get them in better shape, better cardiovascular shape and they really worked him hard this off season and I think you could tell that last night. I think that that mm -hmm. really uh helped out and uh yeah, I mean uh I thought the you know the, the defense ha played very well last night. Guys like uh Caden Heishman and Grant Bailey played yeah. really well. Yeah. And of course you have a really good goalkeeper in Parker Wallace. I think whenever Cass would try to you know get some run of play going but then they, they couldn't really sustain possession. I think that was the Rochester defense had a lot to do with that too. Yeah, I think in, early on it was uh, a struggle on the defensive end for for Rochester. Yeah. And I, I think Wallace was the one that you know he made a couple of saves there. Yeah. It could have been more than one zero. Coach Back has really thought the light the game started late due to a lightning delay. It didn't get started until about six o'clock. Right. And Coach Back has thought that the lightning delay just. It almost kind of stopped them in their tracks. They just weren't moving as well. Mm -hmm. They said they had a really nice warm up before what they thought was going to be the game at five, and then all of a sudden they just weren't moving as well. Yeah, seemed like once they got that first goal, though, it, it kind of uh, the, you could tell the momentum had switched, and you could mm -hmm. also tell that uh, maybe that light switch, you know, kind of flipped on for them a little bit. Yeah, and it was kind of a dominating performance for Rochester after that point. Yeah, it really was, and it was a really nice bounce back after a five nothing loss to North White mm -hmm. back on Tuesday. So. Yeah, you know they're one and one on the year, and uh, you know we'll, again, it's a tough conference. It's a, mm. it's a pretty tough schedule. I think. Yeah. I think we talked about it during our broadcast last night. The TRC just keeps getting better and better in boys soccer. Yep, yep. So uh, nothing much going on tonight, right? We're just yeah. uh, opening night of football. Mm. You know what? What nobody's really excited about that or anything, right? <laughs> so. Uh, Rochester uh, starts off their 2023 season on the road tonight. TRC matchup at Wabash, and you know Wabash obviously runs that spread offense. And uh, you know Coach Schaefer has talked about wanting the defense to to really improve this year. So they're going to get tested right out of the gate. Right now, I was at Rochester scrimmage against Winnemac last Friday, and boy, I was uh, again. I, there wasn't a whole lot to say about the offense just because the first team offense wasn't on the field a whole lot. But boy, the defense really stood out. They were fast, physical, and in a bad mood, which mm. is kind of how you like your defense. I yeah, mean, yeah. Uh, they were, you know, the, on all three levels. I mean, the, the defensive line really penetrated well. The linebackers just pursued all from sideline to sideline. And then, the, you know, the secondary is, is going to, I think it's going to be a, an interesting year for the secondary. Because they've got you know two kids back and Dylan Hook, who's a senior at one cornerback, and then they got a sophomore safety and Brant back, who led the t you know is about as experienced as sophomore as you'll ever see. Right. And then that third corner, and then that third guy in the deep in that secondary is going to be cornerback Zach Parks. Now Zach Parks is only a sophomore, 
We saw him on the baseball field last year. He's a really athletic kid, and he's gotten the nod of that one cornerback spot. So those cornerbacks are going to be have a lot of responsibility tonight. But boy, they were very good, uh, and they're going to be asked to support, you know, help on run support uh, tonight as well. So I don't uh, remember how tall Zach's. Fairly tall, isn't he? Yeah, I think he's around six feet. Yeah, so that's a nice size for a corner. Right. He he, he you know he grew up in Rochester, spent his freshman year at Peru then transferred in the middle of last year to Rochester, played baseball in the spring for the Zebras, and now he's a football player, and we might see Zach Parks carry the ball on offense too a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just really excited to see. You, you put Alex Deming back in the middle linebacker, and oh my gosh, I'm... Yeah. <laughs> I would not want to be the opposing back trying to you know get around or through him. Right, and we should mention that yeah, with him and, and, you know, Wes Meadows is another guy who's going to play a big role on this team. And Wes is a senior. He's probably going to start both ways. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to start at tight end on offense. He's going to start at the other inside linebacker spot along with Deming. And then uh, another kid who's really come on on the defensive side of the ball is Gavin Young. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've mostly seen, you know, Gavin, I think, is probably spending maybe a little more time on offense. But uh, with him, he's going to play kind of that, uh, kind of like an outside linebacker, almost even like a hybrid like strong safety slash outside linebacker spot, mm-hmm. and so uh, you know again, and then that, and then you know you got Deming at inside linebacker, and he's a force, but then you got Colin Weand and Peyton Young at defensive ends, mm-hmm. and they're going to be really solid. Right. Now Weand's played more tackle than end, but he's really getting used to that end spot, and then Peyton Young's going to line up at end, and he he just looks like a different kid. I mean he's. He's put on a lot of weight and a lot of good, good weight. weight right. he, I mean, it's, I mean, he looks, he is every bit of two fifty, and he's just rock solid. Oh wow! And I mean, he, he really controlled his matchup. I mean, there was one play, and I think I wrote about it on RTC Four Sports that time, where, I mean, he's blitzing in on the quarterback from Winnemac. The running back, who's sitting there, he realizes that the guy that Peyton's blitzing in, he, I mean, he's there to block him, and Peyton just steamrolls the running back. And then in all in one foul swoop, he steamrolls a running back and then sacks the quarterback. Yeah, on the same play, like right. in, in the same motion. Right, like right. that is a tackle them both. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then if the ends can play well, then you got Brady Beck and Xavier Vance at tackle, and mm-hmm. they are going to be a load to, right. for any for any group of center and guards that they're going to face. Yeah, if your ends can keep the, the ball moving to the inside, eh, with that inside, and then with Alex Deming <laughs> roaming the middle linebacker right. spot, boy, that's going to be – you know, and on Wabash's side too, you know, they've got Isaac Wright, the quarterback is back, but he's missing a lot of pieces as far as, uh, right. you know, graduations on his skilled position players. Right. Uh, I talked with Ron Schaefer earlier this week. I said, what impresses you about uh, Isaac Wright? And he talked about his elusiveness. Mm-hmm. And so that, that's, in a lot of ways, that's the game within the game. Because Wabash is going to want to get Isaac right outside the pocket, I think. Maybe some bootlegs. Because uh, he, once he gets outside the pocket, he can, he can be dangerous. He can, run, he can run it or he can throw it on the run. And meanwhile, the, from the Rochester standpoint, you want those ends to kind of set the edge, keep him within the pocket, and just sort of make him read and scan the field. Remember, they graduated two really good wide receivers, like you mentioned, in Antonio Grant and Justin Booth. Mm-hmm. I mean, those were the two excellent receivers. Yeah, yeah. He's, no, you still got Trevor Daughtry. Mm-hmm. Daughtry's a senior. He's a very, very good receiver. But they don't really have a whole lot of weapons beyond that. Mm-hmm. We'll see Keaton Fields. Um, he's a good. He's, he's the senior. He's their most. He's their best running back. He's their leading rusher from last year. He's back this year. And I, th- I wouldn't be surprised if they threw Fields a couple screen passes, maybe, or a couple just dump offs in the flat. Yeah. And see him get some yards there, but they otherwise they're pretty inexperienced at the receiver core, so it might be a good time to play Wabash now than maybe later on in the season when the, when their other receivers can get some experience under their belt. Yeah, Rochester's got a great history against Wabash. They're fourteen and zero against them since they joined the TRC back in two thousand six. Beat a fifty two to thirteen last year at Wabash. Now they have to go there again tonight. Yep. And I'm I'm excited too to see you know the the debut of Carson Pollock at quarterback for the mm-hmm. uh, Zebras. So I'm excited to see what he can do and right. what does he add a, a throwing dimension that they didn't have uh, a whole lot of last year. A throwing dimension, also a running dimension. I think right. we're going to see some design runs for Carson. Right. In addition to the run, the rushing attempts that you'll see for for Deming, Ferverda, and uh, Brant Beck. Yeah. I mean, uh, again, Brant Beck averaged over 11 yards a carry last year. Yeah. 
<laughs> Colton Fervent averaged 8.1 per carry. Right. And we almost forget about him. And, of course, Deming, you know, averaged 7.5 two years ago, averaged 6.4 last year. I said, you know, are you con- I asked Rach if, you, if you're concerned. He goes, no. He goes, first of all, you know, we could have left him out there in some blowout games. He could have padded his stats. Right. But second of all, that's a sign that, um, you know, if it, if teams are really focusing on him, then the other guys will get involved. Yeah, opens it up for the other two. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I do think Zach Parks will get um, some – I wouldn't be surprised if Zach Parks gets some carries. I wouldn't be, even be surprised if Gavin Young gets some carries as yeah. well from that wingback spot. Yeah. A lot of weapons. A lot, right. of, a lot of weapons. Right, and Ron Schaefer really likes to develop that stable of running backs. Mm-hmm. He, he, you know, uh, uh, so uh, you know, we'll see how many of those that he can he can develop because he was truly he was definitely trying to do that during the scrimmage as well. Yeah. Well, that's going to be coming up next here on Channel Four. So we're uh, really excited. We will be at Wabash for uh, Week One football. Rochester Zebras at Wabash. We're going to take a quick break here. We're going to come back and. Talk some more sports, and uh, we're going to talk some Argus and Caston when we get back here in segment number two. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trusts to appeals and guardianships, Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. Welcome back here. We're talking sports with Val on a uh, football Friday afternoon. And let's go to our one school that doesn't have football. They play football. Uh, the Argus Dragons, Val. The uh, the Lady Dragons got a big win, uh, you know, after suffering a, a, a tough opener to uh, South Bend Trinity. Uh, they got a big comeback win and uh, got a win over the uh, Plymouth Pilgrims. Yeah, looking back, I think you know they lost seven to one at Trinity Greenlawn back on Tuesday night, and again, I don't know if I seven to one was something that we foresaw, but certainly that's a really tough opener. You're traveling up to South Bend, playing on their field, you beat them in last year's sectional. Right, I'm they sure probably they were, weren't real happy about it. Yeah, we're re- and they were ready for you. And again, it's an Argus team with nine freshmen on the team. Yeah. So yeah, it probably shouldn't have been that that much of a surprise. And Trinity Greenlawn won seven to one, but boy, Argus. Bounced back nicely, five to nothing. Lily Hines had a hat trick, but the other two goals came from a freshman, Leah uh, Pizzuto. Okay. So, and they've got another freshman, and Hayna Willis, who's really uh, contributed so far. So, yeah. So, uh, what Plymouth has always kind of had Argus's number. Yeah, it did, doesn't matter uh, how good Argus was; they seemed to have their number. Yeah. yeah, and I've always played them all. So that was a really nice win mm-hmm. for Argus last night. And I'd be curious to see how they do on Saturday when they take on Northwestern. Yeah, it's a another winnable game for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, big day coming up Saturday for for all of Argus and uh, for you too, right? You're gonna yeah. be uh, gonna be up there giving a little speech. They're celebrating the 60th year of the uh, boys soccer program, and Val has been invited to uh, to go up and give a little uh, talk as yeah. part of that with. Uh, I believe uh, John Vanderweel and, and then Coach Schneider and uh, was Coach Todd Vanderweel the other one? Yeah, yeah, and uh, the pre yeah um, was Van Dyne. I think Coach Van Dyne's going to sp- speak as well. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is yeah they're honoring the 60th anniversary of the program. So I've been around for what about a third of those years. Yeah, getting there. Yeah, yeah almost twenty. So, mm-hmm. so Lots. just uh, I'm very very honored to be there, and we'll see how my speech goes. <laughs> Have you got that figured out yet? Uh, a little bit. It's in. It's, a, it's getting. Bit. It's yeah. getting there. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to feed the teleprompter before <laughs> I speak. But uh, yeah, uh, just really honored to do that. I mean, I've. Uh, you know, I mean that, that's. I mean, part of I think building a great program is honoring your own history, and I think mm. if any if any school appreciates its own history in any sport, it's Argus with with its soccer program. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about a lot. You know, one of the first two schools was Argus and Culver Military Academy, the first two schools in the state to uh, start soccer. So, right, sixty years of Argus soccer, and obviously they've got uh, you know several state championships to go with that. There was th- what, three of them before they considered they were yeah. part of the IHSA, and then they Nin- have the one right back in nineteen seventy three, nineteen seventy six, and nineteen seventy eight. They yeah. won. They won the soccer state championship in the fall of 78, and then the boys' basketball team made it to the Final Four in the 
winter of 79, the yeah. March of 79, and it was basically that same group of kids on right. both teams. Not 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 any good athletes in that group, was there? <laughs> Halfway decent, Jeez, you'd have yeah. to say, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be good. And then, and then they have a, they and have a big was, game. And then I was there in 2019 when they won under the IHSAA auspices at Fisher's yeah. High School. Yeah, and then runner-up the next year. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then they got a big game coming up after that as well. They they play Oak Hill. But I believe the ceremony is after the game. After the game. Yeah, okay, so the game Hill before at, the game. Yeah, so the Oak Hill game will start at 1230, then the ceremony, and then the girls' game I think will start at night. Oh, the uh, girls. Okay, the boys' game is in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, and uh, Oak Hill. That's always been a very good opponent. Yeah. I mean, a very, a very solid opponent. So, uh, again, uh, you know, Argus coming up a seven to nothing loss to Warsaw on opening night. I mean, again, we know Warsaw is an outstanding team, and this is an Argus team that doesn't have a, a ton of firepower. We don't think. So, uh, be curious to see how this Argus team develops over time. Yeah. But they, they don't skimp on the schedule. No, no, they don't. And, and we saw that last year. You know, they only had two wins coming into the sectional, but they were still able to, mm-hmm. to scratch out a couple big victories and, and get another sectional championship even after only having two wins during the regular season. So yeah. Coach Vanderwill hoping that maybe he can do a little bit better than that, though, in the regular season this year. Right. Uh, definitely curious to see kind of how some roles expand, especially in the midfield. Because mm-hmm. you graduate a kid like A.J. Mills, and that's going to have an impact. And he was so big on that team, especially with his leadership. Uh, curious to see, uh, curious to see how, how much better Sawyer Crace gets in goal because mm-hmm. we've we were really impressed by him last year as a freshman. Right. And then uh, you know uh, Ethan Petz, I think, is going to play a big role on this team as well. Right. Volleyball team off to a uh, rough start, zero and two to start the season. Um, but they had a couple of uh, you know pretty tough matchups there: Tippecanoe New Valley and Goshen Homeschool. Yeah. And uh, Lost both of those. Right. New on, coach. New coach and Andrea Perez. She's a 2017 Argus grad, so back coaching her alma mater. But she has four years of coaching experience uh, already. I mean, including three years, the last three years coaching the JV. So now she's been now she's coaching the varsity. It's a team. You know, you look at a girl like Shelby Weiser. I mean, it's a team that's kind of uh, the key to their progress is going to be, I think, when it comes to passing because I think. Mm. Uh, once they can handle the pass, then they can get their offense going. It, it just, it's, it, it was kind of when I when I saw them play against Valley the other day. I think that was just the issue. Just if they can sustain ball control, then they can actually get some attacks going and right. put, put the other team on their heels a little bit. Yeah, you're you're not on your heels trying to figure out how to get the ball across the net. Right. You're actually making something uh, positive right. happen. And when you can handle the ball better, then you can set up a block too mm-hmm. eventually. Yep. So there was a. A little bit of a contest last night at Caston as, uh, you know, uh, Caston coming off of, let's talk about this first. So Caston with the uh, slight upset, I don't know, they were home uh, hosting the uh, Cass County Invitational and they uh, pick up the big win against Pioneer on Saturday to, to right. win for the first time in school history in right. that uh, tournament. Well, they started their day by beating Lewis Cass 25-15, 25-11 to get to the championship match. And then they beat Pioneer in a, as intense of a, of a volleyball match as you'll ever see the second week in August. Right. I mean, if you didn't know it was the second week in August, you would have guessed it was, you know, like a, it, it felt like a kind of a sectional match. And I know that's almost like a cliche to say, boy, it felt like a potent... But that really doesn't happen that often, I mean, especially in August. I mean, teams improve a lot, but... You know, Caston won 25-22, 23-25, 15-9. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were down 8-6 to six in the third set and finished the match on a 9-1 to one run. It was They were down, you know, they were down 6-8, and that's when Gina Hurlmeyer called timeout. And I think it just kind of reminded them of kind of how good they were and just to stick to the fundamentals. Yeah. You don't think there's any kind of rivalry between Pioneer and Caston and girls sports over the last few years? Yeah, I mean, this is, yeah, I mean, it's amazing because when you think about it, since, and we talked about my third three-year work anniversary here mm-hmm. at RTC, well, in the three years since I've been at RTC, Pioneers won state championships in volleyball, girls basketball, and softball, and Caston has beaten Pioneer in volleyball girls basketball and softball in mm-hmm. that three-year span mm-hmm. which when you think about it is pretty astounding mm-hmm. um, from where i mean for one thing to win state championships in all three and in fact they won them all in the same year 
but for casting to have made the progress where they can be pioneer in all these sports. Mm-hmm. I mean that that's that's amazing too. In fact, now they've beaten them. Uh, well, they've beaten them multiple times in girls basketball and softball, and now they've mm-hmm. finally beaten them in volleyball. Mm-hmm. What was so impressive about casting was you know Alexa Finke and, and Macy Hinderleiter. We knew they were good players, but they've even taken it a step further. Mm-hmm. And you know Addison Zippelman has really taken on a six rotation role now. Okay. Where she was maybe more of a back row type player, but now she's been she's being asked to hit, and she's a very effective hitter. I mean, and you know they cover tips well, they block well, um, their serving has gotten a lot better. And in fact, you know Annie Harsh was at the uh, state fair showing pigs, <laughs> so she missed the Lewis Cast match and didn't show up until about halfway through the first set against Pioneer. But McKenna Middleton stepped up as setter and did great. And you know we were kind of wondering what what were they going to look like with Delaney Lowry graduating. You know, she was such a big part of that team with her setting. Well, McKenna Middleton has stepped up and did a great, and she did a great job all day on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Carly Summers is a young player, sophomore, is kind of, you know, taking on a greater role. Because remember, they lost Bailey Harness and Kinsey Mollenkopf to graduation as well. Mm-hmm. So they, they take that momentum and, and they go to Carroll on Tuesday and, and pick up a win against the Cougars in uh, in that one. And, that would lead into last night's opener in conference right. so play. So I got them to three and zero, and now they're playing yeah. Culver at home. And you're thinking, well, they've really had Culver's number over the years, but this was a not anything that we were expecting. No, and it, it looked like it was going to be a quick match. Mm-hmm. Starts off, um, you know, we'll see here, but uh, it starts off, you know, all casting and sets one and two, and uh, we'll show you the end of of first. Uh, first two sets here but 23 right. 23 18 24 18 right now here in set one and again you're going to see a very formidable cast and block now that's kind of what what really especially at the 1a level what tells apart the really good teams from the not so good teams is that blocking ability and cast and is just had their block is just so fierce because it's not just one player it's finky and it's hinder lighter and it's isabel scales mm-hmm. and so they win the set and then the second set again you know, Culver has their moments. Um, they're going to win a point here. Another thing you notice about this match is that Castle made quite a few subs. Culver barely made any. Mm-hmm. And they're... Uh, and, and you know as well as I do, when you go down two zero in a in a volleyball match, it's it's tough. You're you're right. behind the eight ball big time, especially when you're on the road. Um, yeah, I think yeah, there was a miscommunication. They really weren't able to get a good attack in, and then you know, Culver has to chase the ball all over the court. It winds up going out and. Caston wins the first two sets, 25-18, 25-18. And then came the third set, and at that point, Culver just decided that they were not going to let the ball hit the floor on the mm-hmm. other side of the net. This mm-hmm. was this was so impressive. This was uh, how they – this just speaks so well to their mental toughness and just their resolve. And it gets to 24-20, and then watch what happens. I mean, Caston will win the next – five points uh, maybe i'm giving away too much of the plot here but <laughs> well yeah it, it 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 was doubly impressive to me what culver did because obviously mm-hmm. down two sets to zero you could have just folded right you could have mm-hmm. said okay we're done we're gonna and you end up losing 25 to 8 or something so they they get up 24 20 and then like you said, Caston battles back here and and they're gonna actually take the lead 25 24 i think yeah, I think this was Harsh who was serving at this point. I'm trying to remember. I, but once she's st- her serving was just fantastic. I mean, another thing Caston does is they serve really well. They they spend half an hour a day serving at mm-hmm. practice every day. I mean, that's another way they get a lot of free points. And Culver got a little uneasy with the ball. I mean, if you're Culver right now, now it's 23-24. I mean... It it's got to be hard just to even make the right and moves I'm, I'm without that, shaking. I'm I'm in the stands. I'm saying, and everybody's just saying, "Hey, just one pass. Just don't even think about getting the next point. Just think about getting the next pass. Mm-hmm. If you get the next pass, then the rest will just follow." But I mean, these casting kids—they refuse to lose. They 
and again cast and the back row play was so well. I think that was uh, Hinderleiter mm-hmm. who tied it at twenty four all, and now all of a sudden it's it's totally up for grabs. You know, Harsh had a kind of, she served short earlier. Um, Shelby Olivares played very well for Culver. Very good passer at the libero spot. But they put down another kill in that deep corner. So it's now, now it's match point for Caston, mm-hmm. 25-24. Yeah. So now, now what are you thinking if you're Culver? You're, you're, I mean, you're, on one hand you're thinking, boy, we're right there. We're going to get this set, and we're going to take it to four. Now we can't even take that. But then I think there was a block there that tied it. Um, I don't know what Coach... I don't have my I don't have my match notes with me. I, yeah. You know, one girl who really impressed me was, well, there were a lot of girls who impressed me for Culver. Livy Overmeyer was one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, she, because with her now, they have a really, they have a really good block. Mm-hmm. Now here's another kill. So casting gets another Casting goes up 26-25. They've got another match point. And I, I thought from what I saw, Grace Sieber did a nice job of kind of controlling the offense from that setter spot. Right. She, she really seemed like she... she but, right, and it's really it's a two-setter system. It's Sieber and it's Ashley Pugh. They okay. both played well. Yeah. So again here, Casting has the opportunity yeah. to put this one away and end this match in three... And Culver, you know, somehow finds the way to mm-hmm. keep this thing alive. And I played a little bit more of this set because I just felt like this was just a really important set in yeah. conference volleyball. I mean, right. you know, Culver, in general. Right, but that point kind of, it almost triggered something in Culver. Almost mm-hmm. like, at that point, they cast it just... They got this demeanor like, will you just let the, will you just give up, please? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Caston just had to hit that one extra shot at every point, and that just had, you know, they, and then that was just they they were they started to make the errors, and then here they can't control the ball, uh, it gets tight in the net, and all of a sudden now Culver's got another set point at twenty seven twenty six. Another girl I wanted to give a shout out to from Culver is the sophomore Tyra King. Mm-hmm. You know she's a good blocker as well, and and then I think there was Bryn Barron on set point, and then the fourth set Culver fed off that, and they were yeah. just terrific in the fourth yeah. set. This was, I mean, you want, you want to put this in a time capsule if you're a Culver fan. They yeah, served talk well, about flipping a switch, right? Right. You know Bryn Barron, we had seen her as kind of a setter, you know, in previous years. But now she can just focus on hitting, and the thing about Bryn is she's got every shot. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about this before. She can hit left, she can hit middle, she can hit opposite. She can hit from the back row, she can hit from the locker room. I mean, she is just so good, and you've got to be wary of her. And then the back row girls kept, uh, you know, they kept the ball on the, you know, off the floor, and... All of a sudden, the fifth set, you know, gets to twelve. You know, you know, it was just kind of a classic, kind of a heavyweight fight, just punch counter punch. Yeah. And it's going to get to twelve all eventually. Again, Shelby Olivares really steady at that libero spot, and they would tie here twelve all. Uh, another girl I want to give a shout out to for Culver is Avery Garland. I mean, she has found a home in that back row, and I think she seems just so much more comfortable. Mm-hmm. But it gets to 12 all, and we're going to see the final three points of the game, and this is when you know the cast and gets their resolve. Yeah, he's it's so impressed though with what Culver was able to do. Obviously, you know, having to win that third uh, third set, 28-26, yeah. and then. You know, mm-hmm. being able to just kind of dominate twenty five yeah. sixteen in, in set four and, and forcing that fifth set after being down two zero, it's mm-hmm. this is a Culver team that's gonna gonna surprise some people this yeah. year. One player that we've been so impressed by is Alexa Finke. Mm-hmm. That's a kill to make it fourteen twelve. Alexa's a great hitter out of the middle, 
And what do you look for in a good middle hitter is they can hit the ball to the corners. They, they're just not attacking down the middle. Mm-hmm. That's one That's one attack. That gets cast into match point. So this is match point, actually, match point number three. And those two match points in the third set. And Finky is going to be involved here. She steps up to the service line and another kill to finish it off. As Caston wins a 25-18, 25-18, 26-28, 16-25, 15-28. And did you notice Coach Hurlmeyer? I mean, you could tell that she was very relieved. Of course, you mm-hmm. know, there's there's some history there, obviously, with Culver yeah, oh, yeah. as well. You oh, know, yeah. she was a it's head a... coach for the basketball team for a while. and so Yeah, I mean, she's still she, – I mean, she's known Bryn Barrett for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. You know, she yeah. knows the, in the Barrett family, I, you know, I – uh, they're still. I, I saw them associating afterwards. They're still very, you know, good friends. The yeah. parents and the the Hurl Myers. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, she she knew she knew that Culver was playing well. That this wasn't that this was uh, this wasn't just her team letting up a little bit. This was Culver stepping up and playing a lot better. And you know, uh, Andrea Barron was certainly disappointed by the loss, but she was just. I think she felt like her team kind of made a statement as well when I was talking to her afterwards. Yeah, I, I think they did. They kind of uh, put some of the conference teams maybe on notice. And, you know, you got some, some big matchups yet to come. Obviously, Pioneer still has to play Cassidy in the uh, conference matchup. And Pioneer has to play Culver. And you know, Right, I believe Pioneer has to travel to Culver. Yeah, so that'll be, that'll be a fun one. Right. So. And, you know, I think you've got a pretty decent Triton team. Yeah, who might have a say in things, right? Uh, so I think this this volleyball, we've had a lot happen in one week of volleyball. Yeah, not yep. even a week. Yeah, and we haven't even gotten into the you know some of the others. North Judson, I don't know what they're going to have this year, but they typically do for pretty well, mm-hmm. you know, volleyball wise, obviously. So it's going to be interesting. Um, but uh, you know, Caston off to a big start, and they get the one zero uh, record for the conference play as well. Right. Uh, you know, uh, Winnemac lost to Rensselaer last night. St- you know, off to a one and four start. You know, Winnemac will also be at the Tomahawk Tournament in North Miami tomorrow. In addition mm-hmm. to Caston, in addition to Rochester, so uh, another test, kind of maybe a step up for, from for Winnemac. See how they do against better competition. I think mm-hmm. Caston is going to be right in that tournament along with you know a team like. Uh, so I think again. I think if South Adams is there, I think they're probably the favorite. Mm-hmm. You know, Northwestern um, lost to uh, Wabash the other day. Wabash is going to be a good team, also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think I think I think we're going to have a lot of I think we're going to have a lot of close matches this year. A lot of five setters. I think we're going to have yeah. more five setters this year. Yeah, that'll be my guess. Pioneers heading down to Franklin Central this weekend as well, so that'll be a, a big test. Yeah, for them. Coach Nye has told us what teams are involved in that. That's uh, kind oh, of a who's a who who's, of good teams. You know. Yeah, in the in big schools. Yeah, yeah. And they got an even better tournament at LCC coming up later on. Yeah, I think Rossville and Pioneer were the only schools that weren't uh, three, or, yeah. three or four A. So, yeah. all right, we're going to take another quick break here, and then when we get back, we're going to talk about our other three football games that we got coming up on uh, broadcast for tonight here on Talking Sports with Val. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskin's is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit Kriskin'sPoolsAndSpas.com, call 574-857-3100, or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskin's can help you. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Looking for an easy way to provide custom branded products for your business, school, sports team, or fundraising event? Let the Winning Edge set up a customized web store that features branded products tailored to your business, school, church, or charitable cause. 
with a wide variety of customizable apparel, sports accessories, office accessories, and custom tumblers, the Winning Edge is sure to provide you with the best style that suits you. Find your edge by calling 574-223-6090 or going to our website, thewinningedgeathletics.com, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Hello, sir. How can I help you today? I'm looking for a special gift. We have no tolerance for tomfoolery today. What do you mean, tomfoolery? What I said was, we have a nice selection of jewelry today. Oh. May I suggest that you give my friends at Affordable Hearing a call? Affordable Hearing offers hearing testing and unique solutions for everybody. We guarantee the lowest prices in the area and now have offices in Rochester and Logansport to serve you better. Call to book an appointment today. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val, and we talked about the Rochester Zebras football game. We've got uh, three other football games going to be broadcast tonight as well. We've got Cast and Culver and Pioneer all broadcasting their games tonight. Uh, let's start off over at uh, Fulton. The Cast and Comets uh, looking to uh, find a win. They're on a 14-game losing streak, and they take on a West Central team that really put together a great season last year, Val. Right, West Central won, went uh, ten and two last year. Their only losses were to Culver. That was only that was their only regular season loss, and then they lost in the uh, sectional final to Carroll of Flora. Uh, but you look at that uh, West Central team. I mean, they've got a three-year starting quarterback in Connor Marlad. He's back this year uh, for his senior season. But they also lost a lot to graduation. Aiden White, who was the top running back, graduated. That uh, Buzz Beeswanger. Mm -hmm. who was probably their best two-way lineman. He was a big horse they had. He graduated. So I'd be curious to see what we see. But you got, you know, a three-year starting quarterback for West Central. And for Cats, they've got Gavin Molenkoff, who's, I think, making his, I want to say it's his second career start. I think he, made, he started one game last year as a freshman. But, you know, he's got the reins of this offense now. And it, I, I'm really curious to see how these Cats and freshmen do. Because Coach Ulrich, Coach Chris Ulrich, you know, when I've talked to him, he's really kind of talked about, you know, the, the, these guys are going to be you know, expected to step up, but they they have a record of stepping up at the middle school level, but it just how well will they uh, adjust to the speed of the game? You know, when you think about guys like uh, Ashton Boyer and Landon Rigney and Gage Manier, I mean, these kids are, you, may, you maybe haven't heard of them yet, but you're going to hear about them soon, mm -hmm. as soon as tonight. And then, you know, how about Braden Unger? He's listed as a defensive tackle. He weighs 150. He's, he's a freshman. But he's a kid that Coach Ulrich really likes a lot, and, he, and he, they're not afraid to put a, a smaller guy that no spot mm -hmm. to kind of try and cause havoc at the line. And how about Brody Brewer, a 210, 220-pound center? Remember, Kasten goes shotgun 100% of the time mm -hmm. on offense, so it's important to have a good center. So they're trusting you know these kids with a lot, you know, with a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to, and I want to give out a shout out to another kid, um, Lance Hanna. Don't be surprised if he's a senior, but he, this is his first year at Cast. He's a move-in from Rossville. And you don't be surprised if you see him in both the wide receiver spot on offense and the defensive back spot uh, as a cover corner. Uh, from what I hear, he's a pretty good baseball player as well, so we might see him in the spring. Lance Hanna, he's a move-in from Rossville. So okay. write down that name. And then, uh, you know, you got uh, – otherwise you get got two really, you know, experienced guards on offense with Pete Duval and – uh, Levi Martin. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this is a. It'll be interesting to see kind of how the younger players kind of get, uh, how they gel with the the older players. And you've got you know uh, I'll, I'll be curious to see if Jabez Yarber takes on maybe a bigger workload on offense. Uh, that you know he he mostly lined up behind the quarterback last year. Don't be surprised if he lines up maybe in more of a, like a wing spot this year. Mm -hmm. But he's going to get the ball and they're going to try to get the, get him the ball in space. You know, Jabez is just a talented athlete. You know, he's only a sophomore, but he doesn't look like a sophomore out there when you see him play. Yeah. Well, a lot of young kids for the Comets are going to have to grow up in a hurry. And, uh, you know, this this game, this rivalry between West Central and, and Caston, you know, they've they've had a lot of times where one of them was struggling. And, you know, it's been a pretty competitive matchup, a uh, good opening night matchup for both of them usually. Right. They played twice last year. West Central won both. They won 26-8 to in the season opener. That was in Francisville. Then they won 28-6 to at Caston in the sectional. So Yeah. Uh, and, again, that, I thought that sectional game, you know, if you'll go watch the video of it, it was a pretty close game for about three, three and a half quarters. So yeah. I think, you know, the Caston kids, are, I think the veteran Caston kids are going to go and, and tell the younger kids, hey, we've got a chance in this game, but you've got to, 
stay tough for four quarters. So I'll be curious to see how that works. And we should mention Brandon Kinzer, who teaches the weights class at Cassidy. He's going to help, on, help out with the coaching this year. Okay. And he's a kid I think the kids really look up to. And, you know, then and then you got Tony Slocum back, who's going to help out with the defensive game planning. I think Hunter Shane Lobb is going to be helping out with the coaching. Mm -hmm. I think Sam, Sam Duvall is going to be helping out with the coaching. So I'll be curious to get a lot of young, kind of a mixture of young coaches and veteran coaches as well. Yeah, a lot of familiar names, though, yeah. too, even if they're young coaches. Yeah. They're, they're kids that, uh, you know, went through the program at Caston. So. Yeah. I think you can get a sophomore quarterback and a sophomore running back. And a, I'll be curious to see, uh, you know, but Mollenkoff and Yarber, they don't carry themselves like sophomores. And I'm, I'll be curious to see how they do. Yeah. Should be a good one down at Fulton. The uh, cast and Comets and West Central Trojans coming up tonight. Also, uh, Culver, um, you know, they're, they're going to have to find their way, you know, minus Shane Schumann and, and quite a few good seniors. And, Boy, they, they've got a, a tough one right out of the gate. Conference game and plus one of the top teams in the conference with North Judson. And that's uh, that's going to be a big test for this young Culver team right out of the gate. Right. Um, defensively, they're going to have to stop Brock Benson. I mean, he is a big-time fullback for that North Judson offense. Yeah, they graduated Aldrich Harper and they graduated Cheyenne Allen. But uh, I'm sure North Judson has moved on and they're, they're excited about this season. And Culver needs to be ready for who's... Who is going to be out on the field, and not feel? It'll take very, very short time for them to feel sorry for North Judson. In yeah, fact, it won't take any time at all. Uh, they're going to have to play really hard in order to to compete with this team. And Judson plays so well on defense too. They're always so, you know, they're going to run a they're going to run a triple option offense. You have to see discipline on defense. And then uh, uh, on defense, Judson is just they don't they don't miss tackles. When you notice what do you notice about them, they don't miss tackles. They don't get caught out of position, and that that just speaks so well to what the job that Brett Lambert does at Judson, and the job that he has, he's done. You know, as for Culver, you know Austin Faust, he's he's more of a spread guy. You know he kind of he kind of merged that power T uh, that that Mike Zayner uh, brought to Culver with some of his own spread concepts. I think this might look like a little bit more like a spread, especially when you've got a, a kid with a lot of arm talent and Jonas McEwen under center. And his brother Caleb McEwen is going to be a big uh, factor at, at one wide receiver spot. But also, Ethan Binion is going to have to get, share more of a little. We, we really like what we saw from Ethan last year, right. and he's going to be even a bigger part of the offense. Yeah, he had a pretty good year last year, so he's going to have to step up. And then they got a uh, transfer in uh, uh, Jack Jack Rogers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack Rogers. I wanted to give him a shout out. He's a senior. He's going to start both ways. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised if he gets some carries on offense. He's going to play a big role on defense as well. I want to give it some, some newcomers, kids like Isaiah Vela, Theron Carrington. We're going to be talking about those kids moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the freshman, Drake Zorich, um, he's a player who's going to play a big role kind of on the line, too. Mm -hmm. So, again, they graduated a lot in terms of, you know, I think we talked about this last week. Uh, you know, they graduated Devin Burkett and Ben Lee and Stephen Pugh. You know, so it's going to be a, it's going to be a new, look, lo, new look on the line of scrimmage, both lines of scrimmage for Culver. Braden Mulbash is kind of the one steady, steady guy, mm -hmm. and he's going to have to be a, a kind of a leader on that on, on both units. Yeah, looking forward to see how this works out. Um, you know, everybody, every right. indication we've gotten from up north over there uh, around the Judson Way is that, you know, like you said, they're not looking back; they're looking forward, and yeah. they're expecting to have a, another really good season up there at uh, North Judson. Right, so. they went twelve and two last year, made it to semi. In fact, they made it to semi state the last two, two years. years so. mm -hmm. I was talking. By the way, this is kind of one other addendum. I was talking with Austin Faust. He said that uh, starting in 2024, with, with the new Hoosier North, you're adding North Miami and South Central, is that everybody will play two non-conference games to start the year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so they won't have that. So big... Culver won't play North Judson. Yeah. They'll play North Judson next year. They just won't play them in Week One. Yeah. We do know that Culver will play West Central in Week Two. They're moving up from Week Four to Week Two starting next year. Mm -hmm. So, and then. Uh, Austin Fast also said they're looking for a Week One opponent. Right, it's still to be determined. Right, because the South Central non-conference game will now be a conference game for right. them. So, so it's have moving. To find, right. yeah. So it's moving down from Week Two, mm -hmm. and the North Judson game is moving down from Week One. Mm -hmm. And if West Central's playing Culver in Week Two, I would imagine West Central's playing Winnemac in Week One. Just guessing. I mean, either that or they won't be on Winnemac schedule at all. Hmm. You think they'll? Well, and I, I would be stunned if Winnemac didn't play West Central. That would be that would be interesting because you know West Central and Caston have always played Week One, so yeah. now West Central Culver 
West Central Winnemac, West Central Caston. Yeah. So one of those is probably going to have to drop off a West Central schedule if they're playing. Yeah. Yeah. First two weeks are all mm-hmm. non-conference. So, yeah. Hmm. That'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, the other game coming up, uh, big county rivalry, Pioneer hosting Lewis Cass. You know, Pioneer um, looking to uh, bounce back after a two and eight season last year. Lewis Cass, um, you know, they've got some pieces back, but boy, they had uh, some pretty big time players. You know, Luke Chambers is playing at UND. He graduated. They had some uh, other big time players graduate. So, um, new look Lewis Cass team, a very very young Pioneer team. The numbers aren't real high, but uh, yeah. they got a lot of freshmen and sophomores. But I did notice in uh, in the article I was reading uh, some of the weights of some of these uh, Pioneer players are are a little bit better than we've seen. And I mean, we're used to some one fifty one fifty five numbers, and there are a few of those, but several uh, two two twenty five two fifty in the line. I mean. Looking bigger, yeah. maybe on the front line. Right. Um, I, first of all, I wanted to give a shout out to the four seniors. Mm-hmm. Um, when you talk about Caden Hill and Ryland Toloza and Tyler Zellers and Colton Baker, mm-hmm. Colton Baker, I think, is one of those, you know, he's one of those linemen, senior linemen who you were talking about, who's put on some weight. Um, and then, uh, you know, Tyler Schnurple's back as a sophomore. But it's a lot of sophomores and juniors on that line. But only, again, 20, only 29 kids on Pioneers roster, only four seniors, only four juniors. So 21 mm-hmm. of the 29. Our freshmen and sophomores, mm-hmm. but promising looking class, and you know Mike Aranz has uh, got the reins as far as quarterback yeah. for them, and you know looking forward to seeing what he can do. He had a little time under center last year, and I, I think they're gonna, you know, Ryland Toloza. I mean, mm-hmm. boy, watching him run and track, he is lightning fast, and mm-hmm. and he's, you know, he may be only five six, and I think what does he go about a buck seventy, mm-hmm. but. He's elusive. He's fast, and he, you know his cutback is just you know he can put his foot in the ground and go. Yeah, and uh, he's strong. Right. I mean, this is going to be a, right. It, it's a wing T versus wing T battle. I mean, yeah. Lewis Cass also both teams play wing T, so both teams kind of see the, both defenses see the wing T in practice every day. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I was talking with Coach Adam Barry earlier in the week. He talking about that Lewis Cass is kind of their defensive discipline. I mean, they're, you're not going to trap. You're not going to run a trap on Lewis Castle. They're going to be ready for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, th- uh, so uh, how well you block? How well you get the, the angles on your blocks? And then how can you? Also, can you can it physically st- hold up against Lewis Cast for four quarters? I think this is going to be a great test. I mean, a pioneer can pass this test. I think it'll help out there for the rest of the year. Yeah, it'd be a good boost to start the season if they can, yeah. you know, get off the ground right. running. Because, and... but because that was yeah, I mean, that was just a problem last year. They just their opponents were just bigger, faster, and stronger. I yeah. mean, they've got a, they've got a, you know, they they did something about that this off season. Yeah, and pretty good weights. Or, uh, we'll, or we'll see if they what they did this season. Right, off-season. right. I, I know Coach Barry was a little disappointed, maybe in in some of the summer numbers for the weights program. So yeah, you know, hopefully that won't. Right, I think too I wrote bad. about that in my article that I wrote. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, watch out for L.J. Hellis, the quarterback for for Lewis Cass. He's kind of a veteran. Uh, the Fry kid is a pretty good, solid running back, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll be curious to see kind of the run-pass balance for Lewis Cass. I, mm-hmm. I don't know how much they'll – I think both teams, if they throw it, will kind of use their tight end. Yeah. And, you know, monster game rivalry-wise. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously a lot of uh, Cass County ties there with uh, with the two teams. So, Right, even with Lewis Cass and the TRC, I think this is going to be their season opener for mm-hmm. years and years to come. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, for Lewis Cass, that's going to be an interesting season, too, you know, joining the TRC this year. Uh, so they're they're going to be jumping right into the fire, whereas, like, North Miami coming out and then Northwestern coming in next year. So that's, uh, you know, a big adjustment. We'll talk more about that as the year goes on with, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a lot of our teams playing Lewis Cass. So should be a good one down at the pit. They're in Royal Center tonight, Pioneer, Lewis Cass. Culver, North Judson, Caston, West Central to go along with our Rochester yeah. and Wabash. Off. Oh, there's another Solano brother, mm-hmm. JJ. Yeah, I saw that. And yeah. there's another Toloza brother, McCaden. Mm-hmm. He's a freshman. And he's a lineman. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of uh, lineage that keeps going down. You know, there's been a lot of schnurples over the years. Yep. Uh, you know, so there's uh, a lot of that that goes on there, and the people keep coming back. So, yeah. 
We're going to take another quick break here. When we get, uh, come back, we're going to talk some Valley and some Winnemac as we continue talking sports with Val on the opening night of football here for the state of Indiana. We're excited to get this going, so we'll be right back. Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Since 1974, Steve Moore Agency has provided the City of Rochester with customized insurance solutions that will fit your needs. With a variety of coverage policies for business, home, auto, life, and more, Steve Moore Agency is sure to cover all your insurance needs. Call now at 574-223-3010 or stop on in at 602 East 9th Street to see what Brody Moore at Steve Moore Agency can do for you. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible. It should be customized to patient needs. It should strive for better health outcomes. It should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over 50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.fultoncountyremc.com or call in at 574-223-3156. Welcome back here to Talking Sports with Val as we uh, wrap up today's episode, getting ready to take you out to Wabash High School here at the conclusion of this one for the Zebras and the Apaches. Let's uh, wrap this one up as we talk some uh, Valley and some Winnemac Warriors here. So, Tip Canoe uh, Volleyball, we haven't really talked much about them. Mm-hmm. They they got off to a good start there, uh, defeating um, Argus in their opener, and then uh, also picked up a win against Wawa C. I think uh, they have another... A great win over Wawa C on Tuesday night. They won that one in five, and then the next night they traveled to Plymouth and lost in five. Lost in five. So they're Plymouth. two and one on the season. That's an interesting Plymouth team that, you know, they, they beat Rochester in three, now they've beaten Valley in five. Uh, it's a Valley team that, you know, they brought in a, a, a move in from Warsaw and Ava Egolf, who's going to give them some height at, at the middle hitter spot. And I think that's something they really needed because, remember, Emily McGriff graduated. So they really didn't uh, have a kind of a, a middle hitter with a lot of experience. So Ava Egolf is going to be huge for this team. But, you know, it's the it's the junior class that, you know, and, and well, I mean, and uh, you know, Colette Blackburn's a big time player too as a senior, but it's the junior class who's going to do a lot of work on this team when you talk about Avery Wagner and uh, Michaela Costello. I mean, they get a lot of leadership from their junior class. Same with uh, Emma Patrick. Mm-hmm. And, you know, another new coach for the uh, volleyball team as well. So they've, you know, had to adjust to the coaching for a couple different times. Right. Here. John Hutton is the fourth coach in five years because mm-hmm. Mallory Eaton left, then Doug West took over for a year, then it was Ashley Durf for two years. And now John Hutton's back for a second stint. And, uh, and but, but Mallory Eaton is also back as an assistant coach. So I think this is going to be more, st- I think this will provide more stability. I mean, John Hutton, you know, teaches at Valley. Maybe, remember, he was teaching at Valley. Driving to war, driving to Plymouth after school every day, and hmm. he just talks about it. Just you know, being home, you know, you know, you know the kids. That's not an easy all... drive either. That's that's kind of crazy, actually. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I think he, I think I think there's a comfort level for him. Now they didn't serve the ball when I saw them play Argus. They didn't serve the ball all that great. There were too, there were a few too many service errors. Uh, they're going to want to get better at that, but they've got some good servers. I think it's just a matter of. Uh, being more consistent. And then, you know, the thing is with uh, Wagner and Costello have such a good chemistry with each other. And 
and they get so much offense out of that. And I was asking Michaela Castell. We know Michaela; she's a terrific softball player. And I asked her if you know you play softball all, all summer. Is it a, an adjustment for you to go back to volleyball? She goes, actually, no. She goes, my my shoulders loose from playing softball all summer. I can just serve it and just hit it. You know, don't have to worry about loosening up my shoulder. Hmm. Uh, this is a, this is an interesting. I mean, this is an interesting team because I think. You know, it's it's about being ready in the middle of October. I mean, this is a it's a winnable. You know, I don't know if it's I don't know how winnable of a sectional is. Culver Academy's won it what three years in a row, but mm-hmm. it's only a five team sectional. I mean, Valley is, you know, Knox has struggled in recent years, and Bremen has struggled in recent years. Um, so I I think you know Valley can compete. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the opportunity is there, and you know, as they get adjusted, like you said, it's not a completely new coaching staff. But it's a new head coach, so right. John Glenn has struggled in recent years. I mean, they're, they've been uh, up, up and down. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, we'll keep an a eye. A new on... coaching staff, but they they know the kids well. Right, right. Keep an eye on the uh, the volleyball team there. So for uh, Valley football, uh, new schedule, independent schedule. They're not in a conference this year, but the opener is the same. As right. it's been for the last few years, going up to Wawasee. Right. I wrote my season preview article for Valley Football, and I, I really kind of focused on the, how they put together a schedule so quickly. Mm-hmm. Remember, they told the TRC that they were leaving on March 31st, and the TRC basically removed them from the conference on April 21st. Mm-hmm. So that was not even four months ago. And so they had to put a schedule together on the fly and kind of how it all came together. They really wanted to play West Lafayette. It's at West Lafayette. That's in week uh, seven. Uh, so that's kind of one of the highlights of the schedule. I mean, West Lafayette made it to semi-state last year in 3A. They just really feel that they have to take advantage of these uh, teams that they're facing. That you know, a lot of, you see a lot of high-powered offenses, and I mean, there's no, there's there's no uh, there's no more routine to the schedule, and that's what they wanted. I mean, mm-hmm. it's uh, you know, Coach uh, Seymour Warrior talked about how it's okay to be uncomfortable. You know, that's that's why they wanted this schedule. I mean, you know, they got. You know, and they start off with two straight road games at Wawasee and at Rochester, two kind of rival games, I guess mm-hmm. you'd say. I mean, it's only the third year they've ever played Wawasee. Mm-hmm. They haven't played them at all prior to 2021. So, this is a Wawasee team that's a 4A team. You know, they went one and nine. They've gone one and nine the last two years and haven't had a winning season since 2014. So, you'd imagine Valley's going to be favored in this game, uh, even though it's being played in Syracuse. Uh, you know, I, again, I. What Coach Moriarty said that really kind of took me aback was he thinks this might be the best defense he's had there, mm-hmm. which is saying something because they play great defense. Right. You know, and I'm, and I'm thinking about uh, again. I just wanted to mention some names: Cameron Smith, Cameron Mason, who was injured for most of last year. He's back this year. He'll start at one of the defensive tackle spots, and then Phil Smith will start at the other defensive tackle spot. He's kind of I talked we talked about Peyton Young with Rochester. Phil Smith is kind of Valley's version of Peyton Young. He's mm-hmm. he's a kid who just looks a lot bigger and stronger. And then at the defensive end spots, Dalton Alvarez is just a dominant force. I mean, he's, you might have to double team him. Mm-hmm. I mean, most opponents might have to double team him. And then at the other, def- but the thing is, at the other defensive end, you got Kyler Johnson. Right. <laughs> so how do you how do you right. you know you can't double team everybody? Right. So right. yeah, yeah. Now and then on offense, Albers moving from fullback to guard, and then that frees up fullback for Brock Durf and Grady Moriarty. And mm-hmm. I think they I think they trust that those guys can handle that spot. And we know about Nate Parker. So this team is going to, you know, you got to respect their running game, but then with Cody Eastgate and his passing ability, and then you got three good wide receivers in Wade Jones, Brayson Smith, and Cody Black. Yeah, I think Eastgate had a big-time breakout year last year. Yeah. And I think he's uh, just poised to continue that good this foot, year. Good footwork, good mm-hmm. mechanics, yeah. good accuracy. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, Landon Durkis, who's 6'4", 230, and can play tight end and is a force at outside linebacker. Mm-hmm. Did you mention uh, Drago? Yeah, and then, yeah, Wade Jones, <laughs> who's maybe one of the best safeties in the state and is going to – yeah, he can do about anything on the offensive right. side he, he wants to. Right, yeah. right. Can play running back. They can use him more as a wide receiver this year. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Wade's. T- I mean, through a through a touchdown pass last right, year. Right, right. And I mean, their secondary is just terrific, and uh, you know, it's it's going to be a really good defense. Again, while we see they're you know two and eighteen the last two years, and their two wins were over Plymouth, mm-hmm. who has also really struggled. So yeah, they uh, didn't win a game last year. Right, yeah. So I mean, you, yeah, you, you'd have to think Valley is the favorite going into tonight's matchup. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I wanted to give a shout out to some of those kids, especially Durf and Moriarty. I mean, those are kids who 
Got a little, got a little taste of varsity action last year, but are going to be in the starting lineup this year. It's it's an interesting schedule because you know obviously you said the first two weeks on the road, so they go to Wawasee, they go to Rochester, and then oh boy, they come home. Their opener is against Twin Lakes, right? With Kevin yeah. O'Shea, who's won what five state championships when he was the coach at LCC. Yeah. So, right. So I mean, it's right. a, it's an interesting first three weeks. Two on the road and then four straight at home. Yeah. So that is that's a, that's a inter- unique schedule. Right. But uh, I think when you have to put a schedule together in yeah. April and you end up with, uh, you know, maybe it's not balanced quite the home and away that you'd like, but right. I think they got some pretty four good straight teams. At, four straight at home, and then the fourth, the fourth game of that four-game homestand is against Jimtown. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think Valley has ever beaten. Yeah. And then you, get, and then you travel to West Lafayette the week after that. Yeah. And, you know, that's when they get next year, when they get into that conference, I mean, it's going to be a tough conference. You know, right. you got teams like Jimtown and Bremen who have historically just been, you know, juggernauts in football. You've got Glenn who's just, you know, they've had some really good years. Coach Barron, Coach Barron is, has that program on the upswing. They had yeah. a really nice year last year. They really made a lot of improvements. You know, LaVille just continues to be a solid team. You know, yeah, Knox. We right, we don't know where LaVille and Knox are slotting in yet, but, yeah, I mean, they'll be formidable. Yeah, yeah, so it's should be a fun one once they get into that conference as well. Mm-hmm. And it'll be interesting to see how they balance that, you know, if they're able to keep some of those Twin Lakes, West Lafayette games. Mm-hmm. So... Um, Winnemac Warriors will be on the road against Knox, so that's another big week one conference matchup, and you know, obviously, just a monster rivalry in general between mm-hmm. Winnemac and Knox, and uh, Knox looking to to be a pretty uh, formidable opponent in the Hoosier North this year, yeah. and Winnemac looking to to try and find a, a formula after you know graduating a bunch of seniors a couple years ago. Right, I saw Winnemac scrimmage Rochester the other night. Um, they uh, they, you know, they got a new quarterback in Max Gearhart, who's a senior but has never played quarterback before. He actually played more defense last year. I wanted to give a shout out to that offensive line, which I think really, um, I think I think it has a potential to be a good offensive line. When you talk about Wyatt Wheeler at left tackle, Max Keller at left guard, Cody Wheeler at center. Wyatt and Cody are brothers. Wyatt's a senior. Cody's a freshman. Um, Charles Dysinger is the right guard. He's a sophomore. Played center last year as a freshman. They're moving him to right guard this year as a sophomore. And then the right tackle is a senior in Elijah Matthews. So, again, the offensive line they had two years ago, that was just a veteran unit who played, played a lot <laughs> right, of football. Right. Now can can they get to that standard this year? They struggled at times against a very good Rochester defense, and, and Josh Burgess admitted that, but he goes, we needed to play a physical defense like Rochester in their scrimmage because look who they play right off the bat. Yeah. At Knox. You know, and then Pioneer, and also within the first five weeks, they got to go to uh, to Judson and to Laville. Mm. So I mean, when you play, I mean Knox, Judson, Laville, we think those are the three best teams in the conference. They play them all on the road, all within the first five weeks. <laughs> wow. So I mean, you you got to be ready to go. Yeah, you're gonna find year. a lot out about yourself real pretty quick. S- pretty soon, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so we'll see how they we'll see how they do. I mean. Um, you know, they want to use Cash Roth as more of a wide receiver. And with Roth and Jace Bentel, that's a pretty nice combination uh, at, at receiver. I really like that group. And then you got, you know, at running back, you got Jaden Jones. Who, you know, we didn't see Maddox Businski d- during the scrimmage. If You know, you had him to that depth. You got Talon Garner. You got Willis Dennis Jr. So they can have some options in the, in the, in the backfield. And they can have some options at that wide receiver spot. How do they incorporate them all into the, into the, into the offense? Uh, you know, you could. Uh, that'll be curious to see. Um, Mark Hendricks is on the coaching staff, but he is not calling the plays. Uh, Brandon Burgess, who's Josh's brother, he's the offensive coordinator. Uh, Mark Hendricks is helping more with the offensive line. So uh, I think they're, you know, they really like kind of the mesh of the coaching staff. Levi Schultz, great Winnemac player, helping mm-hmm. out with wide receivers and DBs. Dalton Button, uh, we saw Dalton, he was a dominating for us on that. At, Win- at Winnemac, played college football. He's mm-hmm. gonna help out with the offense and the defensive line. So, cool. uh, you know, it's yeah. it, it's as usual. It's an, uh, this is we've been saying this about Winnemac for years and years. The entire coaching staff is full of Winnemac grads. Mm-hmm. They know that they know the program up and down. Yeah. And uh, we'll see how this program develops. But again, the the toughest part of the schedule is early. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're gonna get hit early and often by some really good teams. Yeah. So they'll have to be ready for that mm-hmm. for sure. So. Uh, 
Good luck to the Warriors as they head up to Knox this evening to take on the Redskins. Right, and again, not that there's ever a good time to play Knox, but I don't know if you want to play Knox the first week of the season when it might be like 75, 80 degrees outside and you've got 33 kids and they got 50-some. Yeah, right. If you're willing to bet. Would you be willing to bet oh, they get 50? I would say maybe, so, Maybe yeah. 55 or 60? Yeah, they yeah. normally have pretty good numbers. Yeah. Obviously, it's a big 3A school, mm-hmm. so I would think the numbers would be there for them as well. So Yeah. And so again, if if and by the way, this game we're assuming it's moving down from week one. Yeah, if they're going to do the if, yeah. gonna, if everybody's playing non conference games in week one. Well, two. will they keep Knox? Yeah, or, or, yeah, or, or or will it or will it be a non con? Yeah, I should say will it It'll be a non conference game, one, so it yeah. might still be so week might, one. It might be week one. Yeah. Yeah, but will will Knox be able to fit it into their schedule? Yeah, yeah. So that'll be interesting. So you would think they would because what is it a six team conference? That the Knox is joining, yeah. So you know they're only going to have five games, so right. So they get four non-conference slots in their yeah. schedule, yeah. Yeah. So you'd think that would possibly uh, be mm-hmm. a game that could continue mm-hmm. for uh, both Knox and Winnemac. So yeah. uh, we got a few minutes here before we wrap things up, Val. Um, I know we really haven't talked a whole lot about uh, cross country. Um, you want to go over a, a quick synopsis of what's going on in the cross country world? Right, we're going to Logan Sport tomorrow for the Jacob Graff invite, and we'll find out a lot more about what teams have. Uh, we do know that um, Valley ran at the Goshen invite on Thursday, and Chesney Miller won the race. Oh wow! Uh, we, we didn't see what her time was, but I mean, she won. Wow! She won the Goshen invite. I, I was, I was. I thought that was interesting that Valley's going to run on Thursday and then run again on Saturday, run twice in three days. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so we'll see how they do. Um, but, again, you've got her, you've got uh, McKenna Lau and Ava Minix, uh, you've got Bailey Bussard, and then you've got uh, – so th- that's kind of the the nucleus of the team. Uh, and then Chelsea Holder is going to be maybe – is going to be in the mix as well. Uh Boy side's a little more undecided. I think Isaac Whetstone's probably the top guy returning. Uh, Rochester can be running tomorrow. Uh, you know, with Wes Steininger and Grant Bailey, that's probably your one two. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're definitely going to miss Chris Rohr, who graduated, but you know, get one two. And then you got Reese Johnson, and Lane Shank, probably in the three four neighborhood. And then five six, you got uh, Hayden Shuck, and you got the Leander Javier, the freshman. And I'm looking forward to seeing Cast and Edison Byram is going to be one of the top runners in the area on the boys' side. Uh, girls' side, we'll see. I mean, you know, with Miley Rood and uh, Alex Lau, uh, that's kind of uh, Camilla Hernandez Rios. I mean, I think it's going to be a pretty good cast and girls' team. I mean, you know, you know, a lot of those girls were freshmen last year. Now they've got a year of experience and a year of conditioning. They've gotten a year stronger. So I'll be curious to see how they do. But uh, And then I'm looking forward to seeing the Pioneer boys. Mm-hmm. I mean, with uh, Meyer and uh, Baker and uh, Leighton Dot, that should be a terrific team at Pioneer. Mm-hmm. And it'll be great to see Violet Montgomery back on the girls' side. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was rough not seeing her run last spring because mm-hmm. of the uh, illness. So it'll be good to see her back. You, you talk about Camilla Hernandez-Rios. Uh, I, we mentioned this last night during the soccer game. Uh, her, I assume it's that her brother, mm-hmm. Ryan Hernandez-Rios. Uh, Caston grad also graduated from Grace. Had a great career at uh, at Grace, running cross country and track. He ran track too, right? He did. Yeah, but uh, he has uh, moved on as a graduate to uh, run at Lipscomb mm-hmm. in in the D one level. So, yeah, that's out of Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, yep. congratulations to Brian. I know it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun, and you know it was it was always uh, fun watching uh, him and and Rands. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, the one-two punch they had with those two, mm-hmm. wow! And so now he's he's running for Lipscomb for the year. So that's that's yeah. pretty uh, pretty cool. So um, I wanted to give a shout out to Aubrey Miller from Rochester, sophomore. Mm-hmm. Uh, made the Indiana Bandit, the Indy Bandits travel squad. That is the squad coached by Dave Duncan, who is Lauren Duncan's father. Okay. So congratulations! I know everybody had their tryouts probably within the last week or two. Yeah. And are finding out where they're. Where their travel team is for softball or baseball. Yeah, for the next I, I year. saw Daylin Buzzard is going to be playing with the uh, the girl from North Newton, the the really good pitcher from yeah, over there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she, I forgot her name, but um, speaking of that, uh, Rainford. Yeah, Sydney Rainford. Yeah. Yep. Uh, speaking of that, uh, get it, Tanner Reinerts mm-hmm. uh, was invited to a. Uh, 
I, I don't know if it's a camp or a, I think more like a showcase. Or, yeah, yeah, out at the Arizona Diamondbacks uh, yeah. facility in, in yeah. Arizona. So congratulations. I, I yeah, we don't know a whole lot about what he's yeah. going to, but it sounds like a really big deal. Yeah. Sounds like it, yeah. Yeah. By the way, Rochester boys tennis beat Valley three to two on Tuesday night in the season opener for both teams. Yeah, yeah. Rochester got wins from uh, number two singles from Robert Bazo, who's moved over from doubles. They got a win at number three singles from Ashton Musselman, okay, who's a first-time varsity player. And they got a win at number two doubles with uh, Jonas Kaiser and Jack Reffitt. Yeah, yeah, good start. Making their varsity debut. Uh, so. As for Valley, new new coach and Thad Mala, they got a win from the number one singles player Cameron Manuel, who beat Tanner Reinerts, and they got a win from the number one doubles team uh, with Ian Cooksey. We saw Ian play basketball last year. He's he's a good tennis player too. I saw him okay. play the other night. And then uh, uh, Coach Malat's son is a freshman, and he is Ian Cooksey's partner on that one doubles team. Okay. Yeah, good win for the uh, Zebras right out of the gate. And it's... Right, and then Valley bounced back, beat North Judson on uh, Thursday night, three to two. So Valley's one and one in the year. Yeah. Rochester's one and uh, one and zero. Oh. They're supposed to play Triton last night. That got rained out. Right. Uh, Rochester will travel to John Glenn for the John Glenn invite on Saturday. Okay. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good stuff. So uh, the the Graf invite down at Logan Sport. Uh, where's Rochester? Are they going to that? Or are they going? Where are they running at? Rochester going to Logan Sport. The Graf invite is out. So Rochester okay. Valley. Cast and Pioneer are all going to be there. Okay. So it uh, should be a fun day down at Logan Sport. That's uh, not an overly challenging course, but it is pretty challenging. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you say it's maybe in the top two-thirds as far as challenge goes, yeah, it's not like right. the hardest, but it's not. Yeah, it, it, it's it's kind of widespread. I don't know if it's the most spectator-friendly course. Yeah, no. Not uh, at all. But... Uh, yeah, I think it, it, not unless you want to run around the school a couple times to see it. Right, it's, and they do get lost in the woods for a couple times. So, but yeah. I, I think it, it, it's a pretty challenging course. Yeah, it'll set up, set them up for you know down the road. Yeah. All right. Well, um, that's all I have. You have anything else? I think that's. Did, did about we it. miss anything? We got. We got. We even get to travel softball. I'm really. Yeah. I'm really proud. There you go. You want to do some AAU basketball here while you get some time? <laughs> Their tryouts are uh, happening now for a lot of them too. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, but we know kids are thinking about that as well. I mean, they're they're balancing. It's tough. It's, I mean, we we talk about you know, it's not like they just kind of turn it off and then mm -hmm. turn it back on. They're 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 balancing multiple sports a lot of the times. They're they're varsity sport with their travel sports. So, yeah, it's even harder. I mean, when you see a two or three sport athlete, it, it's just super hard today to to do that because of the requirements and. If you're not doing the travel, then you're not getting the recognition. If you want to play in the next level, and sometimes if you want to play in the high school level, you got to put in that extra effort. So it's it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a big challenge. And you know, I, I keep going back to Pioneer, but for what those nine girls did playing all three of those sports and mm -hmm. winning state titles, it just it, it's just amazing in today's day and age to to do something like yeah. that. So. All right, that'll do it for us here for this afternoon. Coming up next, Rochester Zebras at the Wabash Apaches. Join Val and Randy on the call for that one. It should be a good first-round matchup, first day, first opening day matchup. Yeah. Um, Thanks for reading the season previews on rtc4sports.com, and I'll continue to write weekly game previews. Hopefully we'll have those posted every Thursday mm -hmm. uh, during the week. Yeah. Uh, but this this was a heavier, heavy riding period for me, and just a lot of football stuff, and trying to we we'll get to the other sports as well in terms of riding. But yeah, we've been paying close attention. Well, yeah, and talk it, about three sport athletes. I mean, you're basically a three sport broadcaster. Mm -hmm. You're doing uh, you know commentary, you're doing uh, TV, and you're also riding. So mm -hmm. you know, talk about uh, getting it done. It's such a blast. Yeah, but I mean, uh, follow me on Twitter slash X at Art Val T Sports for sporting up for sports updates. If if, I, if we don't talk about it here, it's going to be on Twitter. If uh, if I don't write about it right away, it'll be on on Twitter as well. Yeah, you can find all that at rtc 4com mm -hmm. You can find Val's blog, and plus you can find the home for all of our games. Make sure you you don't get suckered in by one of the uh, the spam sites. That's uh, you know, boy, they are just. Everywhere. Anytime you, you talk about a game on Twitter or Facebook, all of a sudden you look in the comments and there's 15 different, you know, spams. Yeah. For, you know, find this game here in 4K. Well, it's, right. no. We usually put the links up on social media. Mm-hmm. We do. Um, 
And if the, you're ever, if the, you're the, ever the, the, the real link, not the, the yeah. phony one. Just go to rtc4.com, and you can yeah. find everything there, or go to the IHSA Champions Network. Yeah. Do not give anybody your credit card number. Yeah, no, we're not asking for mm-hmm. it. So yeah. if somebody's asking for it, it's not us, and mm-hmm. it's it's a fraudulent site. So, all right, coming up next, Rochester at Wabash. Thanks for tuning in, talking sports with Val. Have a good evening.